Uh, hello everyone, I, I'm, it's a pleasure to be here and I want to thank you all for taking time out of your day to come here and listen to Coral and myself. Uh, I'll give you a little history about my, for those who don't know me, uh, like Ann said, I have over three decades of the military service. I started my career as a 17 year old private in the Arizona Army National Guard as a medic. Uh, then I went on to nursing school at Arizona State and became a nurse and after doing four years of that I decided to, I want to fulfill my childhood dream of flying so I became a medevac pilot uh, in the Army to keep with my medical uh, training and uh, to fly. So I did that for a number of years and I worked my way up to Colonel. My last assignment was in fact in Afghanistan. Uh, it was the, probably the worst year of my life, uh, and go figure, but um, I learned a lot uh, being there overall. And, uh, and I decided when I came back from Afghanistan, I was just going to kind of relax and chill out on my porch and pine and enjoy <laughs> life and the deer and elk. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, thought it would be a nice retirement. And I went and worked on my grad degree in sustainable solutions at ASU at the same time. And then November of 2016 happened. Uh, and it, it threw me for a loop. I just couldn't believe, you know, that, hey, that this, how our country is so divided. It really bothered me. And so I didn't think too much more. I just did a lot of the think globally, act locally. I volunteered for uh, a search and rescue, Civil Air Patrol, Take Pride Pine, uh, Strawberry Project, and as well as Community Emergency Response Team, our CERT program. So I just volunteered for everything to fill in the void of all that time I spent in the military, because anybody who's been in the military knows it's 24-7, it's, it's 365 days of the year. So. Um, then what made me decide to run I, uh, was I, I saw somebody told me about Emerge, which is a woman's uh, progressive uh, program to train women, progressive women, how to run for office or support campaigns, those kind of things. And I really had no plan on really running for office per se. And then August of 2017, um, that day in Charlottesville, after hearing about that, it, it, it's like somebody kicked me in the gut. I, I was appalled that anybody could think that carrying the communist, the, not the, the Confederate flag and the Nazi flag was American. That, that, that you're a good person and that we can support that. I served, like I said, over thir three decades, uh, been in many deployments, had many soldiers killed and maimed, and my father was a World War II a, a, and Korean War veteran. And to think that that's okay, those are what my father fought against the Nazis, my soldiers fought against that kind of mentality and were killed, that was unacceptable to me. So I, I decided to run at that, on that day. That was it. I said, I've got to do something about this. I'm going to run for office. Um, had no idea what I was getting into. <laughs> and uh, it's been a learning process. And the, the best part of it is actually getting to meet great people like you. From all walks of life and political affiliations, I really appreciate the, the fact that you're all here. I don't know what, everybody's party affiliation here or whatever. I don't care. The fact that you're here and willing to listen to Coral and I speak and hear what we have to say speaks volumes for your, 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 your open-mindedness and your willingness to learn and that fact that you must care about your community and your country to do this. A um, little bit about my platform is, uh, first of all, number one issue is education. Funding public education. Uh, in Arizona, as I'm sure many of you know, the, uh, we are 51st, if you throw in Washington, D.C., in the country as far as student-teacher ratio. It's horrible. So, so it, it's studies have proven emphatically that if you have smaller class sizes, the children do better, the teachers do better, everybody wins. So we need to focus on that. Then we're 48th, 49th, depending on where you look, in teacher salary. That how do you keep good people here and he retain or recruit good teachers here that can pay have livable wages? It, they don't, so we're losing them. So we're having a, we have a huge teacher shortage and, and retaining them. So those are two of the main issues in education. I think we need to focus on public funding, uh, uh, funding public education. The other thing about as far as education is concerned, I really believe we need to have uh, all day kindergarten and pre preschool paid for. Studies have also shown that kids that go to all day kindergarten do much better in grade school and, all, and they use, tend to go on to advanced education. So we need to look at that. All the best practices show that. So there's no reason, the spending money up front on all day kindergarten pays dividends off down the road you know, for these kids going on advanced education, doing well, not dropping out of high school, those kind of things. And so it stimulates economy when you have a well-educated, trained uh, population. 
So those are the things I'm looking at. The other thing is, is that not college isn't for everyone. We all know that. It's some people want to go to a trade school. When I, I lived in Germany for three years, and we had trade schools. We had plumbers, electricians, mechanics, wood shops, people, everything, all the skills, and they were excellent. I don't know about you, but I live in Pine. It is so hard to get a decent plumber or electrician thing. None of them are well trained, and you just take your, your house at your own risk they having them work on it. And it's not their fault. It's just that there's not the schools out there for them to go be trained in. So we need to get back to the trade schools. I remember as a kid, we had that in high school even, and the community college had that. So we need to start looking at uh, funding trade schools and, and, and putting those, uh, toward those type of skills in, and vocational skills back in our high schools. So our children have choices when they grow up. So they don't want to go to college, they can go on to a trade school. And so then we, you know, again, it stimulates the economy. Everybody's working that way. The next thing is obviously making college more affordable. For those who do want to go to a four-year university, we need to make sure that they're not in debt when they get out. When I went to college, I came out nursing school, zero debt. It wasn't cheap, but I still was able to do just a part-time job to be able to pay for my college and still have a studio apartment. And, and, and then I, I graduated, and I was okay. Now kids are in so much debt, they can't even get a, a place to live, let alone get enough, start off on a job that pays enough for them to pay off that student debt. And we're setting them up for failure. And why would we do that to our own children? So we need to make sure that college is affordable for those who do want to go to it. The other, the other thing I would like to see in our education system is every school should have a school nurse. It, that would eliminate so much of our problems that we, we can preempt. We see children with me mental Ill, health issues, physical issues, emotional issues, whatever, right up, uh, right up early on. And so we can take care of that. I had a school nurse, and I, I remember I loved her. She was an old Army, World War II Army nurse. She was awesome. And uh, I remember when I ever had something, uh, you know, wrong, or you know, I didn't want to go to a certain class, so I just go in there. She was nice, and then she talked me back into to go and give me some tums, and I'm on my way. <laughs> but she was great. And the other thing we need is mental health counselors. We're, we're always talking about it's, it's not and that's a whole other ball game, guns, but it's 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 mental health. Well, why are we defunding mental health then? If we really think it's just mental health, why are we defunding it? So I think we need to have mental health counselors in all the schools along with nurses. The mental health counselors can also uh, preempt if they see some bullying or some other problems with these children. They can get, you know, get on top of it. So those are some of the things I really want to see. And that brings me to health care. I was in the military model, private to colonel. I worked my way up. The entire time, I was fortunate, I was never really sick or anything like that, but I had visit soldiers and I worked in the hospital. If you were a private or you were a general, you got the same hospital, the same health care providers, the same labs, the same everything. I will have to admit the generals had a little nicer rooms than the private staff, but that's all. The food was the same, everything. Why are we doing it? And there was no middle person. It was straight paid for by everyone. When I had my daughter at the general hospital in Germany, it was $11 and 60 something cents for four days. And that was for meals. I had to pay for my meals because I was an officer and you're in a different category. You had to pay for it. it was fine. But four days in a hospital with a, with a baby, I don't, nobody could pay $11 and something cents. There's no way you'd, you, anybody could do that. And it, it just makes sense. Why can't, if it's good enough for a private or a general or a soldier, we should have that same type of health care for everyone. And I, people tell me oftentimes, well, you guys earned it, you earned it. No, just because I served my country, yes, I agree, I'm glad. But um, any citizen should have it. It should be a right, not a privilege. It's, and so I think we need to really start looking at that. And boy, I'm hearing horror stories already from the Gibson over there about the health care. If you have a cat catastrophic illness, a heart attack or a stroke, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, you're supposed to be reducing their stress, not adding to it when you have things like that, by having to pay off so much. And, and it, it just, it's, it appalls me. And like Ann said, I just got back from uh, Hurricane Dorian Relief in the Bahamas. And they have, the Bahamas has universal health care. And, and I don't understand. Here's the Bahamas that, that we consider a, a developing country, so to speak. They actually have health care for everyone there. And all the travels in all the world, in South America, Africa, same thing. Yeah, it may not be ideal, granted, compared to the United States, 
but is it ideal here in the United States? So let's fix what's broken and not throw everything out with the bathwater, okay? Let's, uh, we, we have some areas we need to fix, but overall, compared to the rest of the world, our healthcare uh, services, the doctors, nurses, the equipment, the medicines are all great, but it's not affordable and accessible to everyone. And that, to me, is criminal. No one should be better than anybody else. Everyone should have access to it. So I'm, I'm a firm believer in uh, health care for everyone. And if people want to have their private doctors and all that stuff, go for it. Nobody's saying take that away. Have that. Go for it. But I think paying into Medicaid right now would be a, a really good way of starting helping out. Starting that, but everyone has access to it. Um, the, th uh, the third thing, because we're going to keep it in threes, and believe me, I'd be more than happy to entertain uh, more questions about other things afterwards, but is the local control uh, and infrastructure, <coughs> the jobs. Uh, uh, I know we, in the past, uh, wanted to ban plastic bags, things like that. Uh, I know Cora will probably talk about that. Um, as a mayor, she had to experience that. And then the state legislature is saying no, they put a ban on banning the plastic bags. Oh, no. so, uh, that, uh, to me, that's the most ludicrous thing I've ever, well, one of the most ludicrous things I've ever heard of. <laughs> so those are things, local control, we should be, have a right to have our, uh, do what we want locally. Who knows best what we need than people who live in that area? Because <coughs> LD6 is 36 townships. It's from South Rim of the Grand Canyon all the way to Tondo Basin, Roosevelt. And so each one of those townships I have been in, and they're all uniquely different. They have different issues, they have very different issues. And so like the uranium mining up in the Grand Canyon, the, uh, that's, that's a local <coughs> control issue. Why should we have federal government telling us what to do with that? It poisons our water, it, it poisons our land, and why do we need uranium? Because we're not doing making bombs anymore, we're not do, building uh, nuclear power plants anymore. The last one was in 79, Palo Verde, um, and it's been proven that they're not as it, they're, for various, and I definitely can get an argument with anybody about that one, but the bottom line is we're not building them. So why are we, do, what are we going for uranium for? Why are we going to con risk contaminating the land, offending the indigenous people, and contaminating our own water, if you want to be selfish about it, by having uranium mining? <coughs> Most of the mining, if you know, in, the United, in Arizona, especially, is foreign companies coming in. That Rosemont mine down on the trail, when I was on the Arizona Trail, was a Canadian company that wanted to tear up and build a copper mine. So. And speaking of the, when uh, I learned a lot when I did the Arizona Trail. I did 800 miles this summer across from the southern border of Mexico all the way to the, the, the north rim of the Grand of Utah. And one of the things I noted was the mines, we had quite a few detours because of the mines and the reclamation of the mines. Guess who was paying for that reclamation of those mines? Yes. Us, the taxpayers. And it was companies that, from foreign country companies mostly, that were mining there for various, you know, elements, and then they left the town, they subcontracted and subcontracted, they went under, and nobody was held accountable. We are to tune of billions of dollars of taxpayers' money to clean up those mines. Because there's a lot of toxic waste, lead, arsenic, that goes into those mi mi mining, and then that pollutes our water. So it's toxic to us, and we have to clean it up, and we didn't even do it, or nor did we benefit from it. So that's why I'm against those kind of things, and I believe in local control. So those are some of the, the areas that I'm extremely passionate about and, and want to see some changes in state legislators to, to fix it. And there's, there's probably a 20 to 100 others things that we want to look at. But those are the main issues that right now that I want to address and that I have time for, and I don't want to take up more, any more time because I want to make sure you have time for questions and answers and also for Coral to, to, to talk about uh, her issues.